By popular demand, the Chess.com Rapid Rating Climb series returns with episode 55. If you're new to this channel and maybe you joined before my last video on this series, we play one 15 minute plus 10 second rapid game on Chess.com with the sole intention of trying to climb as much rating as possible. I'll be trying to explain my thought process while I play and then go deeper into the analysis after the game with the help of the engine. I hope you guys enjoy this and let's see what I can do. All right, so we are facing Soja Triceps from, that's Poland, right? Yeah, I'm kind of torn between whether I should play E4 or C4. I've been playing a lot of C4 recently, but we'll go E4. My opponent goes C6, obviously the Karo Khan. There is this um, B3, Bishop B2 gambit that I, it's a bit of a pet line of mine. Although, in fairness, it's not objectively amazing. So I think I'm going to play the two knights with knight to f3 and knight c3. And the idea is just to get really quick development. Now, this is a heavily theoretical line that, in all honesty, I don't actually really know. <laughs> I'm sure it goes knight g3, bishop g6, and then I play moves like d4, c3, maybe bishop to d3, maybe knight e5. H4 looks like a viable move, uh, just to threaten to trap the bishop. So I think I should throw that in, because obviously if I get H5 in, then um, his bishop is simply just trapped. So I'm expecting H6 or H5. Probably H5, although that does give me a very nice square on G5 to access with my knight. Uh, or even a bishop. Um, if he plays moves like e6 and knight f6 to pin the knight. I honestly would have expected him to play a bit quicker because I would have assumed that he knew this move because I think it's quite typical. Uh, I obviously do grant him this g4 square, but I'm not too worried about it. I think d4, c3 are natural follow-up moves. Maybe I'll put my queen on b3 to target a couple of pawns and then in conjunction with knight e5, that that could be pretty nice. And maybe even bishop c4. Although he probably will just play e6 to block the diagonal off entirely. I don't, I don't think I want to start with knight e5. If I start with knight e5, bishop to h7. Um, can I take? Actually, can I just take on h5? If, if knight e5, what else can he do? Because if he lets me take, I ruin his structure and I'm going to play like d4, bishop d3 and he's going to be in a lot of trouble because of g6. Knight e5, maybe h6 was supposed to be the move because then if knight e5, you could play bishop to h7 and there's no pawn on h5 for me to take. If knight e5, rook h6, I just have d4 opening my bishop up. This looks dubious. Knight e5. What, what does he do with his bishop? Bishop h7. I mean, I could take here with the queen, but I could also take with the knight. But the, if the, I take with the queen, then I threaten f7. So the only way to block that would be g6. Because you can't put the bishop back on g6, because I'll take the rook. And then I can just play a move like queen f3. That looks crushing. Importantly, there's no checks on my king. His queen can't somehow pin my knight to my king. And after bishop h7, queen h5, he can't go knight to f6 because I'll just checkmate him on f7. Of course, if bishop h7, I could probably take with the knight, but I think taking with the queen forces the move g6. And after I drop back to f3 and he plays a move like knight f6 to cover up, then his bishop is stranded on h7 because he's played the move g6 and he can't get out. And if I can stop him from playing g5 by doing something like d3, or maybe bishop to c4 first to threaten f7, forcing e6 and then d3 to open my bishop up to control of g5, this rook wouldn't even be pinning this pawn uh, anyway because his bishop will be in the way. Yeah, and he just gives me the bishop. He gives me the bishop. So obviously we take this. And I mean, this is horrific. Like this pawn structure. Uh, that, it's <laughs> pretty dubious. <laughs> pretty dubious. Now, I think what's important now is not to do anything hasty. 
just to make normal developing moves like d4, like bishop d3, like bishop g5 maybe, or bishop f4. Maybe we'll castle queenside, I'm not sure. We could start with bishop c4 to attack e6. But I've, I feel like I want my bishop on d3 though. Hmm. Bishop c4, let's say he goes queen d6. Can I just go queen e2? And just go after the pawn? Because how does he defend it unless he puts his. unless he moves his king? I don't see another way to defend it. We also, if we force his queen to move. Okay, maybe after bishop c4, queen f6 is a bit better. Although, then bishop to g5 will come with issues later. Yeah, I think we should just go straight for the throat. By taking on g6 and forcing his pawn to take, we weaken control over e6. So why not just go after the weakness we've just created? I think, um, yeah, this, by the way, this is one of the reasons why I don't play the Karo Khan, because I, I play the Karo Khan a lot um, myself with the black pieces, right? It is my opening. I play 1c6 against basically everything. It's not even just a gimmick at this point. I just love it. And I'm actually considering creating uh, a course, if you guys would be interested, like covering 1c6 against it, literally everything. Um, because I feel like that would cut down on a lot of opening preparation that you'd have to do if you can literally play the same thing against everything. Obviously, the exact setup would differ slightly, depending on what your opponent plays, but I feel like that could be kind of a novel idea, and actually somewhat viable, actually pretty viable, because, I mean, I play it, and I'm rated like 2,000, right? I honestly didn't consider e5, because I thought it would be way too weakening, um, because look at this diagonal, like, that is horrific. I could go queen to f3 to threaten mate on f7. And I was considering swinging the queen to b3 to go for a double attack. So I mean, like, I don't know, queen f3, queen f6, and queen b3. Uh, also seems unnecessary. He is stopping me from going d4, so I guess his move does achieve that. We could just castle and put a rook on e1. Like, obviously, if I castle, he could take on h4. We need to defending the bishop and attacking. Uh, that looks too risky for him, in my opinion. I think castling might be a very nice move. And then if we castle and put a rook on e1, then moves like d4 might work, because the pawn would be pinned to the king. We could consider queenside castling. We could, but also with kingside castling, we... I don't know, f4 might be a bit risky with h4 uh, being played already, because our king would kind of lack shelter. Um, e5 might be quite a strong move, though, in fairness. d4 is a move that I'm considering, just to instantly break everything open. And if something like e takes, then I'd probably just castle. But I don't like queen takes. So, queen e2. What if we go queen e2? Okay, knight d7 looks logical. Uh, then we get d4, though, because the queen's connection is cut off and this pawn is pinned. That would happen as well if he goes bishop to d6. Same story. And then we get to build up a good amount of pressure. We need two. How does he defend this pawn? If he goes queen e7, he's blocking his own development. I think my queen's going to end up on the e2 square regardless of whether I castle first or play a move. I, I don't want to play d3 because d3 looks passive. I want to go d4. I think knight d7 allows the move d4. And then we can maybe develop this bishop with tempo, go queenside castle. He might be preparing to queenside castle himself. But these pawn weaknesses uh, are going to be around regardless of whether his king gets safe or not. So I'm not too worried. Also, if I can open up this diagonal by going after this pawn, then he could be kind of weak on the queenside anyway. d looks pretty good to me. I think it's a very principled move. Like, our opponent's king is weak. Yeah, we haven't castled yet, but we can castle whenever we want. He can't stop us. And we have some pretty good development. His pawn structure is horrific. 
So we're just going to go straight for his throat immediately. And quite simply, he has to find a way to defend this pawn. Otherwise, we're just going to win the pawn and fill up our bishop in queenside castle. And our position will just be incredibly good. Like, <laughs> there's, there's no immediate win, but visually our position will be amazing. The, the only issue I have is my knight is kind of locked out of the game, but it can always rotate through e4. Or if we can put pressure on g6 and maybe force it to move or somehow take it, then my knight could get access to the f5 square. But then again, my knight might be performing important defensive duties at some point. And not every single one of my pieces needs to be absolutely amazing. My queen's great. My bishop's great. This bishop, it could be good. It could end up trading itself off. Although if I play a move like bishop g5 and he goes bishop e7, I could just leave the tension. Or I could use that as an excuse to get my knight into the game to try and do something like bishop g5, bishop g7, knight e4, bishop g5, knight g5. And then we'll be putting pressure on the light squares. So yeah, this knight does have quite a bright future. It just might take a while for it to actually realize that. Okay, bishop 2d6. You could play a move like bishop f4 or f4 to put more pressure on this pawn. But he can't take me anyway. I'm tempted to just go bishop to g5, keep the pressure up. Also, make that would make sure h4 is always defended if this rook moves. Play something like bishop g5. If he moves his queen to a square like c7, then he can't castle. Or if he goes b6, he does attack b2. But I think we just queenside castle. Like bishop g5, queen c7 looks logical because you're overprotecting the e5 pawn. Castle queen side, and he can't castle. If he goes something like knight f6, then I think we probably just take, and then we open our rook up, and that looks really, really good. Like, really good. And g6 remains incredibly weak in all these lines. If bishop to g5 and bishop e7, then he wastes a move because he just went to d6. Bishop g5, if he goes for a move like knight f6, I think we just queenside castle. Knight e7. We probably do the same. Yeah, I think this is more in the spirit of the position. Maybe you could play a move like f4 or bishop f4 to try and be greedy and go after this pawn. And that might well be the best way to go about it. I personally don't like playing like that. I see this king, I go, that king is ridiculously weak. I can line my bishops up like this. I can put my rook on the d1 square, my queen on the e2 square, put this rook on the e1 square to like form a massive battery. Get this knight involved with a move like knight e4 at some point. I could have played it here because I would have been attacking the bishop, but he just goes bishop to c7. I suppose I could maybe have rotated into g5 to go after the light squares, and that might have been a better approach. I honestly didn't really consider it that seriously. But I don't think it's that big of a problem. I just really want to castle queenside. And I know I can castle kingside, but then he might take on h4 and there's some annoying stuff on the fourth rank. If I castle queenside, my rook is immediately on d1. Whereas if I castle kingside, I've got to play rook f e1 and rook a d1. Rather than going queenside, my rook is already on d1, so I just have to play rook h2 e1. So I'm saving myself time with, like, in an attacking sense. Because, yeah, I could improve my, I could have improved my knight, and that might have been the best idea. And he goes back. Okay, knight e4 looks really strong now. Because I'm threatening knight d6 check. You can't take because it's pinned. And if knight e4, bishop g5, knight g5, then the light squares are incredibly weak. I could consider a move like queen e4, just going after g6. And I honestly don't know how you defend that. If you go knight f8, then that's just really sad. <laughs> like, that's just really sad. And if bish if queen 2, e4, bishop 2, g5, then I can take on g6 first. And then the king moves and I take back. That looks really good. I'm actually probably got some mating attack on the light squares with like queen e6 and queen 2, f7. But how does he defend this? Queen e4, obviously, if rook h6, we just take it, and then we take. Queen e4, I think knight to f8 is the only move, because knight e7 obviously isn't playable. 
I have a. Of course, we could be greedy and take on e5, but again, that's not in the spirit of the position. He could castle queenside. But then he takes and takes, and it comes with check as well. And I can't put my knight on e4 if I put my queen on e4. So queen e4, knight to f8. Maybe I can take with the queen to guard my bishop. And then go knight e4 if I get the chance. If bishop takes, pawn takes. Oh, he can't take because his bishop's pinned. What am I on about? So queen e4, knight f8, and, and queen to e5. His bishop is pinned, and I'm attacking g7. And knight e4 is on the way, and queenside castle might get played. That looks really, really strong. His best move, honestly, might be rook h6, giving the rook up. Actually, I could just take the knight, uh, because the rook would step off with the defense. Queen e4 looks incredible. I'm going to do it. I think the power of my bishop on the light squares, if I can get my queen in like this, it will be game over. Something like uh, bishop to g5, queen g6. If uh, king f8, then it's just mate on f7. If king to e7, then queen to e6 check. King has to go to f8, and then queen to f7 is mate. The black king has simply no escape because we control the light squares too well. And this is one of the issues of trade of bringing your light square bishop out so early with the black pieces in the Karo Khan, getting it taken by a knight, I then get this amazing bishop on c4, and this has all happened, not only because he ruined his pawn structure with fg6, he must have realised that I was going to take on h5 if he retreated to h7, but it puts your light squares in danger, and then he pushed his pawn to e5, and I was like, that can't be right. When he pushed his pawn to e5 here, these light squares were incredibly weak. There was no obvious way in yet, but visually you go, those light squares, they're unsustainable. He can't block me off anymore. What I was talking about earlier, if we had some line like in this position, with bishop h7, queen h5, something like g6, queen to f3, knight f6, bishop c4, he could have gone e6 stopping my attack on f7, because the f7 pawn would defend e6, right? This is what I was talking about earlier in the game. But that doesn't work, because his f pawn went to g6. And then he has these issues in this position, where the e6 pawn is really difficult to defend. You either defend it with your queen, and probably your king if you want to hold on to it, or you have to push it. And he pushed it, and now... He has no d pawn, no e pawn, because his e pawn, well, he has an e pawn, but it's advanced past this diagonal. So, if effectively, for the purpose of controlling these light squares, he has no d pawn, no e pawn, no f pawn, and he's going to get slaughtered on the light squares because he also has no light squared bishop. And I do. This is the power of the bishop pair. You're seeing here, he, yes, he, he can try to defend on the dark squares, right? But his knight, his bishop, his other knight, and his queen are all defending dark squares. Because remember, knights control squares of the opposite colour that they're currently on. So if your knights are on light squares, they're controlling dark squares. That's just how geometrics work in chess, right? But he, he basically has like four pieces all trying to combat my bishop. And then my queen and my bishop sneak in on the light squares and cause chaos. I think this is a really, really interesting, like, positional attack, almost. I wouldn't call this a tactical attack. Like, yeah, there's tactics with, like, bishop g5, queen g6, which, I mean, you could call a tactic. I, I don't know, I, I don't know if I would consider it a tactic or not. Um, I suppose you're technically sacrificing a bishop, but it's forced mate if you take it. Um... So, I don't know if I'd consider it tactical, but I would say this is quite positional in the attack because we're dominating on the light squares and uh, the pawn weaknesses that he created earlier in the game is exactly what we're exploiting here. Personally, I find this fascinating.
Because if he could put this pawn back on f7, put this pawn back on e6, he'd be chilling. He'd be absolutely fine. And he'd have a normal Karo Khan position, the way that I like to play it. Just solid. White probably has an edge, yeah. But I don't have a winning attack like I do in this game. He's taking a long time here. And I mean, rightly so. Queen e4 is not necessarily an intuitive move for me to have played because it's a bit of a weird move, right? I think knight f8. I think knight f8 has to be played. I just take on e5 and his problems, they're not gone whatsoever. If you are enjoying the video so far, I'd really appreciate if you're not subscribed already to hit the subscribe button. And if you're already subscribed, then thank you very much. You can hit the like button if you want, but you're already subscribed and I appreciate that. He does choose knight to f8, which I think is probably the only move. And there's no good way for me to take the knight and then take on g6. I don't want to take on e7, of course, because I just help him to develop. So I think taking on e5 is easily the best move. And then we have ideas like knight to e4, maybe. Or we could just castle and we, we're good. I don't like queenside castle here because of takes, 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 king b1. And then he, he might be able to get away with castling. So I think queen e5. I've spoken about this in a previous video. It's like a boa constrictor sort of move. If he puts his knight back on d7 to attack my queen, I think we just go queen e6. And again, we kill him on the light squares. If he tries knight to h6, we just take it. So yeah, let's do this. If he take, oh, he can't take on g5. What am I on about? There's a pin. And this is the issue. He has no d pawn, no e pawn, no f pawn. And we have so much pressure. And we're just going to continue building the pressure when we get a rook on the e1 square. Maybe we put a knight on e4 to target some more of the dark squares in the position. Okay, knight f6. It's a logical move. If we take, he has to take back with the g pawn, because remember his bishop is still pinned. But it attacks our queen, and there's no obvious way in for us. We could go knight e4 to go after this knight. But he probably just trades with me. Oh my god. He probably just trades. And he's probably happy with that. Relatively speaking. Uh, yeah, his bishop's still pinned. But like, there's no need for me to waste a move going knight e4 just to trade. But I can do far better than trading. Queenside castle is what I want to play. Can he go knight d5? I don't think so. I think we go knight e4 and the threat... I think the threat is bishop e7, queen e7, and knight d6 check. Although we could just win another pawn, maybe. Queenside castle looks good. Preparing rook e1. Rook e1 could be deadly. It really could be deadly. If uh, queenside castle and he goes knight f to d7, again, I think we probably have queen e6. Rook f8 defends f7. But we just go for a move like rook e1. And yeah, he looks pretty busted. There's no obvious way in yet. But we have so much pressure. d5 might be the move in some of these positions. Because we will have a lot of support for the d5 pawn push to break some stuff apart. Just seeing if he has any ideas. Like castle, can he offer a queen trade? We're up a pawn. We are up a pawn. Hmm, that's all queen d6. We could just go rookie one. And just let him take us if he wants, because we'll still have a ton of pressure. Yeah, I'm just going to castle. Knight to um, g4, I assume I just take on g7. I don't think I care about this, because there's too much pressure, surely. I mean, the rook's hanging anyway, so yeah, he can't do that. Hmm, knight g4. Queen g7, bishop g5, pawn g5, queen g5, king b1. Yeah, okay, he does go queen to d6, as expected. If I take take, rook e1, king d7. Knight e4, looks good. Could I start with rook e1 though? 
because he can't castle because I'll take the bishop. So rookie one, he probably has to take. I could play pawn takes. But I think I prefer rook takes. Keep the pressure. We could always play a move like bishop to d3 to go after g6 um, if his king moves off. Looks really crushing. Yeah, let's go rookie one. Oh, lag. Game. Hello. There we go. Rook to e1. And I mean, look at this. Look at his pieces. They're miserable. And it, not to mention his king, right? Our pieces, apart from my knight, apart from my knight, they're perfectly placed. Great diagonal. Great diagonal. Rooks on the important files. The d file is important because I might try and play d5. Either open the file up or force a move like c5 to open this diagonal up at some point. We could always double rooks on the e file if the d file remains closed. Okay, he goes king to d7 preemptively. Interesting move. Interesting move. Hmm. This knight does defend g6, by the way. So I don't think going after it early works. Let's consider taking on f6. Does it give us anything? Bishop takes. Nah, I'm just helping him. Uh, takes, 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 takes. Knight e4. King d7. Takes, takes. We're up a pawn, I know, but like, we're kind of just giving him a hand. Knight to e4 is a, consider is a move I want to consider. Knight e4, knight e4. Rook e4. That looks good because we're, pre we're preparing to double rooks on the e file as well. So that's quite nice. We could consider the move d5. With some nasty ideas. If pawn d5. Bishop b5. King d8. Nah, it doesn't quite work. It doesn't quite work. Maybe the computer will disagree with me, but I don't think so. Knight e4 looks nice, though. It does look very, very nice. If here, 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 it doesn't work because we get a check. Yeah. I mean, trades obviously favor us to an extent because we are up a pawn, and obviously, this is not a good pawn structure. G6 is going to be a massive weakness. G7 is going to be a massive weakness. And obviously, his pieces are not very good. But I want to make sure that if we're going to trade queens and trade a couple of minor pieces, I want to do it on the most favorable terms to me as possible. And what I want to do is put him in a position where maybe he gives me a pass to e-pawn, and we get to throw that down the board. Or maybe he weakens g6 beyond repair. Or maybe we can get into g7. Maybe we can double rooks on the e file. And try and infiltrate to e7 to go after b7 and g7. I want to do this in a way. I'm going to trade the pieces in a way that he has zero chance. Okay, he takes on e4. I think rook takes e4 is the best move. If he takes on g5... I probably will take with the queen, to be honest. I'll probably take with the queen and keep the queens on the board. If rook e4, queen to e5, we could take with the pawn and force the king to e8. But I think I'd like to keep the e-file open, so I'll probably take with the rook. And if bishop to g5, rook g, mm, nah. Probably pawn g5. If rook e8. Rook e1. That looks pretty good to me. We could take here with the queen, of course. Keep queens on the board. Tempting. Is tempting. No, I'm going to take with the rook. I think because I'm low on time as well, I want to give him the option of trading into an endgame that is favourable for me. Oh, I did not consider that move. 
Uh, rookie one, bishop g5 check, queen to g5, rookie four, rookie four. He can't go knight e6. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Pretty good. We could take here. Takes with the bishop. Take, take. Check. Hmm. Now nah, let's go rookie one. Let's keep it simple. Especially, especially because I'm low on time. If I had more time, I'd consider other stuff. Of course, I have to take with the queen, because otherwise he would take my queen. And we have very active pieces at the end of the day. And if this knight can't move, which it really can't move, then his rook can't get out. Because the knight can't go to e6. I guess it could go to h7. Technically. And g6 is defended by the queen. Uh, this doesn't look right. Doesn't look like it will work. Something about it looks off. Um, may oh, I think we probably just go queen e3 to stop rook e8. That looks good. We also just add extra protection to d4. Our king is very safe. We're also monitoring this diagonal with the queen. Upper pawn, remember. His pawn structure is bad. We could always play a move like f3 to just massively shore up the defense of our pawns, but things are protected for now. Now, what we need to do is find a way to punish him. Knight f6, yeah, is obviously the logical move. Rook e6 looks decent, trying to force the queen away from e7. Rook e6, queen to b4. Bishop b3. It's not easy. It's not easy. He's done a good job here, to be fair to him. It's not obvious how we break through this. But what is undeniable is that our position is clearly better and his king is clearly weak. I think that if we just continue making good improving moves, then things will come tumbling down for him. Just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. To shore up the defense of things. Rook e8 looks pretty suicidal. Because rook e8, knight e8, queen e6, king d8. I suppose he could play king c7 to bait us. Oh no, but we control e1 still with the queen. Uh, so that wouldn't even work. So if rook e8, rook e8, knight e8, queen e6, king d8, keep an eye on the knight. He goes for it. No way. No way. Really? Queen e6, king d8? c3? Even if we trade this off into some kind of endgame, we should win. We should win. Hmm. I think c3 is the logical move. To defend d4 and block the queen's access to e1. Our bishop's well protected. So I'm expecting queen to e7. And... We could take, if um, queen e7, queen g6, queen e1, king c2, then he can take on f2, and I don't like that. Queen f8, jeez, okay. Um, what do we want to do? That's an interesting move. What about queen f7? What about queen f7? I think I like queen f7. Because if he trades, then g6 falls. The difference with queen to e7 was that if um, I took and his king took, I wouldn't have bishop to f7 because his king would be on e7 already. He might go queen e7, trying to get access to e1. 
a queen d6, trying to keep the queens on the board. Makes sense. Also defends g6. Um, g3. That looks decent. We could take on b7, but then the queen gets in. So I want to try and set that up. He's doing a really good job of defending his king and posing problems for me. He really is. And I, I've got to be careful of what endgame I trade into. Because if I do something like queen f4, queen f4, pawn f4, my structure is pretty damaged. And this knight can probably pick up my pawns quite easily. And that might not be winning. You do have to be a bit careful. He also has a knight. Knights are tricky. But for the moment, the knight is kind of stranded. The move like knight to f6, I think we probably just take on g7. And he has issues. Because his queen can't get in. That's the important thing. c5 might be a useful move. But pawn c5, queen c5. We could even just play queen to uh, d5. Because he is attacking f2. Force a trade. Because we'll be checking him. And the fact that these pawns are stuck on light squares is kind of an issue for him. Because his knight would have to access f2 to try and cut apart this pawn chain. And that knight would have kind of a journey to get there. But even if it takes this, I could take g6 and h5 in the process. And get a majority on both sides of the board. Bishops tend to be better when there's pawns on two sides of the board as well. Because it can hop between uh, both the king side and the queen side very quickly. Whereas knights take a bit longer. So knights tend to favour positions where pawns are only on one side of the board. Because then it doesn't have to move very far. But it's more agile in smaller spaces. B7 is an issue. B7 is an issue. Because now he doesn't have queen f4 check. What's he going to play? Queen f6 might be a good move. But after pawn takes, after queen takes, he has to take with the knight. And then... um. Bishop to f7, knight g5, bishop g6, knight, f7, uh, knight, knight f2, bishop to h5, knight e4, can I just go g4, knight f6, bring the king in, if he takes, takes. I'm still a, I'm two pawns up. These pawns will be doubled. But I can just bring my king over to the king's side and then try and set up a decoy with c4, d5 on the queen side to force his king over. And then I can take g7 and then push. So, okay, that looks pretty good. My opponent's taking an awful lot of time, which is great news for me because I'm very low on time. And during, during this period, I haven't calculated all that much. I've just made a lot of general observations about the position, which I think is a really good way to spend your time on your opponent's move. Because I don't know what he's going to play. I don't know. But I've made observations. I'm like c5, maybe I have queen d5 in some lines. If he trades the queens and he doesn't have his king here, then these pawns could become weak. So that's why he's gone queen to e7. So that if I trade, then his king is on e7 preemptively. Which is why king d2 looks good to me. Because I stop the queen getting in. There's still no checks, remember. And if he takes takes, then g6 falls. Whereas if I take take, then I don't have bishop to f7 because the king defends that square. So again, he, he does defend b7 as well by doing this. These general observations are quite useful. Now maybe I am going to take g6 because he doesn't have checks on my king with queen to e1, which is what I wanted to prevent. I hope, I, I know I'm saying a lot of words here. I'm drawing a fair few arrows. I hope a lot of it is making sense to you. If you do have questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I will be very happy to answer them. Please just timestamp where you mean in the video if you do have questions, because, you know, otherwise it's going to be very difficult for me <laughs> to um, know exactly what you mean. So just drop a timestamp, ask the question, and I'll be happy to respond. Or someone else might as well. Um, the community on this channel is uh is very cool. It's very cool. You lot are great. Okay, knight to e6. He's threatening knight to e4. I don't like that. Don't like it. Um I think I'm gonna take here here. I don't wanna let the knight into e4. 
Okay. Okay, I'm going to go d5 to try and cause some weaknesses. I've got to be careful where I let his knight go. Got to be very careful. Okay. Go c4. This maneuver is kind of annoying, but I need to get my bishop free. Playing this well, but I always have this pawn to um, potentially cause problems. Ugh, this is annoying. This is annoying. But he doesn't have any threats because my bishop does dominate the knight if he puts the knight there. Gonna try and undermine him. Of course, he's probably not going to take. Because why would he? Not obvious what we do here is. I don't. I don't think it is very obvious. Maybe g4 is an idea. Maybe f4. Then, well, then maybe we can set up some kind of decoy. So if f4, he might have to go king to b6, and then maybe g4. But then, if we do go g4, then h4 is weak. Yeah, he prevents it. Because his knight is pressuring. Let's take... Hmm. Yeah. Take, take, take. Let's just put the H the A pawn down the board a bit. Oh wait, maybe I should have gone like this. Oh, if he goes A5, he locks my bishop out. Ah Bishop A4, Bishop E8, that would have been great. Hmm, that's annoying. That's annoying. Ugh, oh, I should have seen that. Coming from behind. Okay, well this is good. This is good. Now let's do it. We also get this pawn a bit further down the board. Which is always a positive. And I don't know what he does about this. Because we also have this pawn as a threat. Um, I, I think he had to play a5 there. If he goes knight to uh, d6, he stops the bishop coming in. Oof. Let's threaten the knight. What I want to do is get this knight tied to this pawn and this king tied to the defense of this bishop. And then I can bring my king. That's my plan. I'm going to go here. Because I'm just going to get this pawn a bit closer. Also put it on a light square so it's easily defendable for my bishop. And again, ask him what he's going to do. Okay. Let's go. Oh my god, I just hung my bishop. Oh my god, why did I just hang my bishop? He didn't see it. Yo, what did I do that for? I am a very lucky man. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, let's put it back. Let's put it back. All right, reset, reset, reset. I think f4 is the move. Oh my god. So f4. He's got to go back. Jeez. Oh, I'm like genuinely... Oof. Okay, what's... What's my way through, though? Where's my way in? Can I put him in a Zugzwang? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm going to... What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and use the time that I have on the clock. Try and come up with a plan. G4 doesn't really achieve anything. Um, 
Did I try and bring my king around? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Because uh, I was worried previously that he had knight e4 check, but here his knight is on f7, which is why this waiting move was useful, because it put his knight on a suboptimal square. Let's say the knight goes back to d6, king d3, keeping an eye on c4, trying to come in like this. Again, I think I can try and put him in a zugzwang, where he has to let me in. If the knight comes to e4, I probably play g4 to save the pawn. And, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Here, goes for it. Maybe king e4. And knight g3, king b5, knight e4. King c6. Maybe I can just go after a7. Hmm. I think g4 is fine. Although he does have knight, ah, he has a knight d2, so I think giving the pawn up might be good. Because if, I think we can make use of our a pawn, and our d pawn is a decoy. We have to get the king in. We have to get the king in. Yeah, yeah. Because he can't let the c pawn fall. If he goes knight g3, king to b5, he has to come back to e4 to guard the c pawn, otherwise he loses. So we can concretely calculate knight g3 okay i did miss that i did miss that but i think we go to a5 i think we go to a5 now what we're gonna do now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a decoy we're gonna set up a decoy we're gonna go bishop f1 Bishop d3, and we're going to take g6. And he, if he puts his knight on e4 to go after g3, then I think we, if bishop d3, knight g3, bishop to g6, knight e2, here, okay, if here, here, we could also go king b5 though, but then our bishop would be under attack. So let's do this. My opponent is making some good moves. He's really making some good moves. And obviously I did hang a bishop earlier. Will it be enough to save him though? That's the question. That's the real question, because what I'm trying to do is cause problems in the center, on the queen side, and on the king side. To try and completely overload him. Now, if I played f um, f five, then his knight could come up back in. I'm trying to put him in a zugzwang. Knight e two. Here. Hmm. Here. Here. Keeps playing good moves. What is this? I'm going to go for this. Don't know if this is the best plan. I know he can kick my king out. I'm going to put my king on a5. Yeah, because I wanted him to do this so I get a bit more time. I'm a little bit worried about this. But then this pawn goes through, actually. No, I think he's wasted too much time by giving that check, which is kind of what I wanted him to do. And I can just take here. Mm, then he takes on c4, though. Uh, but I can go king here, and geometrically, I've put his knight out of position, so we can't give the check on c3. And I don't see what he does about this. He could go knight f3. Yeah, he has knight f3, wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable defense. Oh, he's going to take... Oh, I didn't see that. 
I did not see that. Wow. Okay, this might just be a draw. Wait. Wait. Can I dominate the knight? I'm going to try and dominate the knight. But he might just be able to push the pawn, though. Ah. Uh, can my king get back? This is... Whoa. This is some insane defense from my opponent. Some insane defense. He's just putting up a dark squared blockade. G5? Surely? Here, 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 here. Yeah, I think I'm losing. Oh my god. Oh my god. I don't know what I can do. I just can't get past this blockade. I think I might have needed to get my king to the king side earlier. That might have been the plan. And if he took on a if he took a six, then so what? Then I would have had this decoy. Oh, I've messed this up massively. I really have messed this up. That. I don't know if that's necessary. Probably doesn't matter. It's G3, right? You can't bring the king. Yeah, I just have no defense. And yeah, I can just resign here, I think. I can't defend this position. That is so frustrating because I was just completely winning. The opening went so well. Like, plus four. You, you can't actually see that. Wait. Wait. Nope. Okay, I'll set it up in a sec. But like, plus four. Oh my god. That is really frustrating. Let's get into the analysis. Let's get into it. Yeah, I I, I can't really like put um sug like sugar it up or whatever. That was just very, very frustrating. Because the opening went so well. Like I didn't know the opening or anything. I just played it really well, I think. And I don't know whether I lost it in the middle game. I think I just used too much time and I couldn't find something that was easily winning. The end game, honestly, I think my opponent just played it really, really well. And it was probably a draw and I probably pushed it too far. I probably just had to settle with a draw because he just put up a great blockade and I had too many pawns on light squares. That was the issue. I need pawns on dark squares because my bishop fights for the light squares. If I have everything on light squares, all he has to do is set up on the dark squares and I can't do anything. So, fair play to my opponent. Very well done to him. Let's see what the computer has to say. I won't drag this out too long because I'm aware the video is already very long, but um, be interesting nonetheless. So, we have e4, c6, knight f3, d5, knight c3. The two knight attack. Uh, d takes, knight takes, bishop f5. And this, this is very normal, but I just think it's bad. I just think it's straight up bad. Knight f6 or knight d7 followed by knight f6, in my opinion, is far better. Or maybe bishop to g4. Bishop f5, though. Knight g3. Bishop g4 is apparently the move to take the knight. Bishop to um, g6. is. It says it's a book move, but h4 punishes it. Apparently. Black needs to go h6. And after knight e5, it's not even bishop h7, it's queen d6 that's the move. d4, knight d7, this is very, very strange. Knight g6, queen g6, and c3, and white is just better. Like, by a, a fair margin, a fair margin. And I guess development is just quite easy, like... Bishop d3, bishop f4, castle either side, h5 if you want. It looks pretty damn nice. But yeah, 
my opponent plays h5, which is a mistake. h6 is a must play move. We go knight e5, which is the best move. And again, queen d queen d6 should be played. And after knight g6, queen g6, I just develop normally. Definitely a better way to go about it. Queen d6, to be fair, is not that intuitive. It, it it's it's a it's a weird move. Normally you'd put the queen on a square like f6, you know, it's a strange maneuver. But yeah, he instead goes e6. Of course we take and damage the structure. We go bishop c4. d4 followed by bishop d or bishop d3 immediately is good, or d4 followed by bishop d3. But I choose bishop c4 because my idea was that he has to defend this pawn with a move like queen to b6. And then, then, knight e4 is apparently winning. Castling followed by rook e1 is very good. But I also thought that queen e2 was very simple. And you either give up this pawn, or you play a move like king d7. And I thought there's no way that black can do this. And the computer agrees. So my opponent goes e5, tries to get rid of the problem. Queen e2, knight d7. And we go d4. That is the best move. I'm very happy that I found that because it just keeps the pressure on. Queen e4 was also good going after this. But I thought he just plays something like queen f6. I can still go d4 apparently. But okay, we go d4 straight away. Bishop to d6 is played. And f4 is the best move. Bishop g5 is good. Knight e4 is also good. Honestly. Something like this, I probably should have gone for. Probably should have gone for. Or, or even f4, straight away. To me, I just thought, oh, it's unnecessary. We can just develop with attack. I know there's no way for him to defend this, though. Like, it's miserable. It is miserable. Something like knight b6, d e5. Bishop b4, c3. Knight c4, queen c4, bishop e7. This is just very, very nice. I don't know why I didn't do this. Bishop g5 is good, though. Bishop e7. You go queen e4. I was very, very happy with this. Because it basically forced this move. Apparently, king f8 was also playable. But, like, you can't do something like takes because it's just mate. You can't stop mate because of the light squares. So he finds knight f8, fair play to him. We take on e5, which is the best move. Knight f6, queenside castle, queen d6. These are all the best moves. Rook h1, best move. King d7. And here, I didn't know what to do. I, I, I just didn't know. Queen e3, queen e2, queen a5 are apparently the best moves, avoiding the queen trade. I went knight e4. After knight e4, rook e4, rook e8. I still thought I was in very good shape. Bishop f4 is a great move, apparently. And the idea is to take with the d pawn. And then do you double on the d file? There you go. Ah, bishop f7? Rook d8? Rook d8, bishop d8. Ah, okay. And then you try and push the e pawn through. I didn't give this enough credit. I didn't give this enough credit. I thought that the e pawn would get blockaded too easily. But no. No, that's not true. The rook d e1 is an inaccuracy, but I was so low on time. Bishop g5, queen g5, rook e4, rook e4, knight h7. Queen e3 is the best move. Knight f6, rook e6. We're, we're playing very good moves here. Rook e8. Take, take. This is still fine. We're still much better. Queen e5 is the best weird move. We go c3. We're still good. We have seven. He he can't take because he just loses because he can't defend the g6 pawn. He'd have to do something like this, and then he'd be down two pawns, and that would be too much. If he tries knight g4, just something like takes takes, and um yeah, this this is not playable for black. He goes queen d6. I could not find the idea. Bishop c2 was apparently good, going after g6. G3 is also good though. And that's why I played it. Queen back to e7. I, I stayed patient. King d2. It's a great move. Knight d6. 
And here I panicked. I panicked and I took. I was scared here after queen g6, knight e4, that he might have something. And the ridiculous thing is, the ridiculous thing is that king e3 is the best move. Like, what? King e3? Well, the knight can't attack the queen because of the, ge ge the geometry. Knight g3 looks scary, though. King f3 is the best. And he has no useful checks, so he has to move his knight. And then I just have to take on h5. I mean, come on now. Come on. This is ridiculous. There's no way I find this. So, you know, I'm, I'm not even complaining. It's more just well played to my opponent, because knight e4, from a human perspective, is way too bad to allow. So we trade, and I'm still winning. King e3, king f6, d5 is an inaccuracy. I needed to keep some dark squared control. King f4. Ask me why I didn't play this. I wouldn't be able to tell you. I don't know why I didn't play this. I was just low on time. Low on time. And what I was concerned about was my bishop not being able to get into the game because I needed to monitor the c4 square. This would have been good. We go d5, c5, and c4 is the big mistake. I need to play king f4. Because then we keep this threat alive. We keep this threat alive. And black is struggle he's he's struggling now. He's struggling. C4 is a mistake. B6 again allows King F4. I don't see it. I go King D3. I go the wrong way. What I needed to do, instead of trying to make my bishop active, was to make my king active. It's an endgame. It's an endgame. I needed an active king. King E5 is a miss. Bishop D1, knight f5. We're doing well. We're doing well here. B4, knight back to f5. Takes, takes. A4 is the mistake. I think the idea is to take the king this way? The same knight d6. Bishop c2. King f6. f4. Stopping the king from coming back. And then black is in a bit of trouble because he doesn't have many moves. Let's say he shuffles, though. Ah, I think the idea is bishop to d3. You dominate the knight's movement, right? And you keep the king under control by threatening the g6 pawn. a4 is not good. But we're okay. a5, again, not the right idea. Knight goes back to f5. I try and sneak in from behind, but the issue is that I can't monitor the knight and the king at the same time in this setup. We go a6. Again, not the right idea. I should have left the pawn on a5 so my king could get to the a6 square to go after a7 in the future. And here, I obviously blunder a bishop. He misses it. I go back. And I just can't find a way in. Can't find a way in. I'm slightly better, but I think it's one of those situations where the engine says you're better, but there is no win. There is no win. I try. Bishop f1 is apparently winning. The knight goes back. King e3. Knight f5. King f2. Knight goes back. And then, yeah. So I need to get this set up. This is the setup. The bishop on d3, attacking g6, and defending c4. This is what I needed. I didn't do it. I, I didn't find the idea. I tried to get my king in, and I'm apparently still better, but... No, I, I, I think it's just a draw. The computer thinks I'm winning? Because I dominate the knight? Knight goes back. Trying to get into f2. King a4. Knight f2. Bishop f5. Dominating the knight from this direction. Nah. It, it, it's a draw. It is just a draw. There's no way in. Yeah. Yeah. Important endgame lessons really is. Because I thought it was a really smart idea to push his a pawn down the board. But all it did was stop my king from getting in. And I throw the game away. I throw the game away. 
I try to be fancy. King b5. Blunders knight f3. I should have gone f6. And after gf6, bishop h5, knight c4. Apparently bishop g4. Kind of go with the h pawn. King d5, h5. I'm better. But this is scary. I can't get rid of the knight. And I'm supposed... I guess this is winning. But, like, it's still scary. King b5. I'm just losing too many things. I didn't see this idea. And here I'm completely lost. There's nothing I can do. <sighs> well played to my opponent. That's really all I can say. I think... um. With the whole knight e4 thing, when I shouldn't have traded queens, I never, I, I never see that knight e4 is allowed. Like I, there's no way I can see that. So my opponent played the end game well, forced a queen trade, but king f4 was so obvious. I just need to play king f4. He can't kick me out. He can't kick me out of that square. And then I can put pressure on. But I committed my pawns too early. I committed my king to the queen side, which was not the right idea. And yeah, fair play to my opponent. This is uh, very frustrating, but this is chess at the end of the day. So thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.